Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I have a very special benchmarking video for you guys. I'm testing a quad fire configuration of the new AMD R9 295X2 graphics card. I'm going to start off with a quick public service announcement when it comes to terminology because we always want to make sure that we're saying the right thing when we're saying things, especially when we're doing YouTube videos. And there is a difference between this quad fire or quad crossfire configuration um, and what is known as a four-way crossfire configuration. And this applies to the NVIDIA side too if you're talking about a quad SLI configuration versus a four-way SLI configuration. The term quad should be used when you're talking about two graphics cards that each have two GPUs for a total of four GPUs, two graphics cards. That's what we're running right here. Four-way should be used if you're talking about four single graphics cards each with a single GPU. Either way, you end up with four GPUs, but this is quad, and four single graphics cards is four-way. So just to point that out, and uh, the benefit you get by going with a quad fire configuration such as this is that you're going to have a little bit more space in your motherboard expansion slot, which could potentially lead to a little bit better ventilation for the graphics cards. Another thing I wanted to bring up is who would actually run this type of configuration, besides me, I guess, and people at Newegg. There are some folks out there who might be going for a quad fire configuration with 295X2s. Chances are it means you have deep pockets because this is a Halo product. It's the fastest single graphics card that's currently available on the market and it's a, it represents a substantial investment. So I would only recommend going for this type of configuration, or even a single 295X2 for that matter, if you're gonna be gaming at high resolutions. That means 4K, 3840 by 2160, which is the standard 16 by nine configuration for 4K monitors out there. Another application might be three-way monitor configurations, so 7680 by 1600, 7680 by 1440, or three 1080 monitors even at uh, 5760 by 1080. I sure hope I had all those numbers right. But uh, why don't we take a closer look at this particular configuration. So with both cards installed in this chassis, it means we have a total of four Hawaii GPUs, and those are the same GPUs, exact same pretty much, uh, even overclocked a little bit more than the reference 290X, but the same GPUs from the 290 and the 290X. Um, that means we have a total of 11,264 stream processors and a potential 23 teraflops of theoretical compute power, which is pretty insane um, when you just look at those raw numbers. Now, uh, a couple things I really wanted to point out, um, if you're actually considering going with a configuration like this, one is that we have a couple radiators since these cards are water-cooled straight out of the box from AMD. Now, these are 120 millimeter radiators. They are a little bit thicker, and each one comes with a single fan. And just in case you guys uh, were curious, we're using a reference model uh, straight from AMD here, as well as a version from Sapphire. And we'll post a link in this video's description if you want to check out some of the other cards that are available on Newegg.com. They all pretty much look and operate the same. Now, if you have radiator configurations like this, it means if you're actually installing this in a case, you're going to need to find mounting points for these that are within range of the graphics cards themselves. So bear that in mind, you're probably going to want to go with a larger chassis and something that has a fair amount of uh, 120 millimeter mount mounting points that are located adjacent to the GPUs themselves. So that's something to take into consideration. For my purposes, since I'm using uh, the Inwin D-Frame here, which is not a very typical chassis, I just ran them kind of like this, positioned out on the table. And uh, they are gonna push out quite a bit of heat since the GPUs still run just as, uh, as, as, as enthusiastically as they do when you're going with a reference cooler, but it just means that all that heat is gonna be transitioned out to the radiators and uh, pushed out into your room or wherever else you have the computer set up much more efficiently. So they are gonna put out a fair amount of heat, so bear that in mind. Another thing to point out is that uh, these power, uh, these graphics cards have a typical uh, board power of 500 watts, which is pretty insane. So graphics cards themselves up here are uh, going to be drawing a lot of power. That means you're gonna need a substantial power supply. I was using the Rosewell Hercules 1600 watt, which is right over there, and fortunately that did have the chops to power this configuration um, without, without too much effort, actually, it seemed like. The, the Hercules actually did a great job here. I was drawing about 1,300 watts peak, um, which is a really, really substantial amount for a home system. So um, if you're in a situation where you don't have very stable power in your home or something like that, you might want to consider a UPS or something along those lines just to make sure that it's going to be stable when you have this whole system under load. Another thing to point out when it comes to the power supply is going to be with regards to the actual power connectors that are down here. You need 8-pin power uh, connectors for each GPU, and if you know the specs for PCI Express graphics power connectors, that's actually 
500 watts is more than uh, would typically pre be provided by two 8-pin connectors, which means they're going to be drawing more power than the PCI Express spec. You want to make sure that you have 28 amps per 12-volt rail per 8-pin connector that you have set up right there. So that means it's very important to double-check the layout, the power layout of your, gra of your uh, power supply itself to make sure you're not, for example, using a couple daisy-chained 8-pin uh, connectors that are going to the same 12-volt rail that maybe has 30 amps or something like that. Um, fortunately, again, with our, our Reelsville Hercules power supply, we were just fine uh, using this configuration. But definitely double-check that and make sure if you do have a multi-rail power supply um, that you're connecting uh, power connectors that are uh, drawing power from different rails or that the combined amperage of the rail is, say, 60 uh, amps if you're connecting two uh, connectors from the same one or that sort of thing. Uh, apart from that, uh, the entire system was drawing, again, about 1,300 watts under load. That's with two of the 295X2s. I also did a uh, test uh, with the single 295X2, and I'll be including those benchmarks as well. That was drawing about 680 watts total um, at peak, and again, those numbers are going to vary depending on uh, what what benchmark is being run and what system, uh, what what uh, actual game is set up. Um, I am going to be testing also against uh, the Kraken G10 configured 290X that's over here. I'll show you that in just a moment. But that one was actually drawing a little bit more with two of them in Crossfire. That one was actually hitting about 700 watts. So you will draw a little bit less power, it seems, with this configuration than you would by going with a two-way uh, 290X configuration. Now for comparison, I did want to give the 295X2 quad fire configuration a little bit of a run for its money, although there's not much that can match up to that type of configuration. So what I have here is actually an R9 290X uh, that has been outfitted with the NZXT Kraken G10 as well as a Kraken X40 uh, CPU cooler. And this was a way that allowed me to overclock the 290X uh, fairly substantially as compared to the reference cooler. So I did some 4K benchmark testing over on my personal YouTube channel, Paul's Hardware. So I'm going to be sharing some of those numbers as well. Now bear in mind when, you, when you're looking at the 290X numbers and the 290X two-way numbers, because I did set up two of these, so I'll be doing a two-way 290X uh, showing there as well. These are benchmarked, uh, these are overclocked, I should say, fairly substantially. So I was able to get about 15 to 18% overclock on these as compared to the 7% overclock uh, that I was able to get with the reference cooler. So these are going to be running a bit faster than the Hawaii GPUs in the 295X2. That said, let's go ahead and run down the specs for this testbed. Our CPU is an Intel Core i7-4960X overclocked to 4.5 GHz, cooled by a Cooler Master Sidon 120XL closed loop cooler. We have an Asus Rampage 4 Formula motherboard, 16 GB of G-Skill Trident X memory running at 2400 speed, a SanDisk Ultra Plus 256 GB SSD for our operating system, Rosewell Hercules 1600 watt power supply, the Inwin D-Frame chassis, and then Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. For 4K testing, we used the Asus PQ321Q 31.5-inch 4K 3840x2160 monitor, and here are the benchmarks. Now one thing you might notice looking at these benchmarks is that scaling with four GPUs can often be inconsistent. So for instance, when we're looking at the synthetic benchmarks, maybe Crisis 3 or Battlefield 4, we actually saw pretty decent scaling, even going up to the four GPU quad fire configuration. 
However, certain other games, Far Cry 3 for example, as well as Metro Last Light, scale very poorly or even not at all once you get past a two-way configuration or two GPU configuration. Now, the reason for this is pretty simple, the, it is that not many people actually run four GPUs in a gaming system. So you don't have quite as much support from the software side or from the driver support side, so you're going to have inconsistency at cer certain times. Now if you happen to be really invested in one of the games that does scale well, well and you're planning to go for a 4K uh, gaming configuration setup soon, then it might actually be a practical configuration for you to look into, particularly, again, if you've got the money to spend. But that is all for this video. Before you go, go ahead and leave me a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what game you would most like to see running at 4K resolution. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and we'll see you all next time.